Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 1. So this series is going to be aimed at creating a first person shooter style with a bit of a retro feel. So those of you who have played early versions of Wolfenstein, for example Wolfenstein 3D, which is what we're going to base all this on, will be in for an absolute treat. But we'll be using more modern mechanics in some respects when it comes to visuals and when it comes to mechanics for our weapons. So there's a lot to learn. It's going to be a lot of fun because I've never done anything like this before on my channel. So. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon to stay up to date with every part of this series and everything else that I have on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So this series is aimed at absolute beginners, beginners and intermediate level. Now, what I intend to do is take you from an absolute beginner to, well, quite a, not an advanced level, but you know, a good, decent level of knowledge in Unity because there's still a lot to learn. So by now, if you haven't already got Unity, you can head over there, unity3d.com, download the engine, whatever version you have, and you'll be presented with something like this. This is just a quick little image. You have to make sure at this point, you definitely have the engine installed and you definitely have the standard assets installed. So make sure they are ticked at the very least. Make sure you also have any device you want to port your game to. So just to let you know, Anything you build in Unity can be ported to any supported platform, i.e. Android, iOS, Linux, whatever. So we'll be building this for Windows, but there is absolutely nothing stopping you creating this for mobile devices. So all you do is just install everything into Unity and you'll be presented with something a little like this. Or if not, you would have something a little like this. All this is, is your new project window. So this right here is where you put the name of your project. Wolfen Clone. Why not? Uh, your location right here. Template is going to be in 3D and we don't need any asset packages because we'll get them as we go along. All you would do now is create project. At this point, you'll be presented with a window very similar to this, depending on what version of Unity you're using, but the general look will be the same. Now, this is the default Unity window. This is how it comes, this is how it looks, there may be a couple of tabs here and there missing but I'll explain that as we go through this tutorial. So I'm going to go through just a couple of things before we go any further. This over here is the hierarchy and the hierarchy is where we store all of our game objects in text form. If we were to click one of these you would see it highlight in this what we call the scene view. And we can see we can even click here and select. These objects are now surrounded by the X, Y, and Z, or Z, axis. And we can move these objects within the scene. So this scene view is where we build all of our game. It's as simple as that, really. And a lot of people do get confused and mixed up between different windows in Unity, but the scene really is the key to all of this engine because it's where we can see visually what our game is. And like I say, the hierarchy and the scene serve ultimately the same purpose. It's where we see our objects, one's in text form, one's in visual form. The next tab along is game with a little Pac-Man logo there. This is where we're able to see what our game is rendering. So if we built our game and we pressed play up here, the screen will go a little bit darker and we'd be in play mode in the game section and we can actually play our game here that we're building. This is where you would test and you would debug and mess around with things. To stop that you would just press play again and go back to scene view. So this over here is the inspector panel. The inspector panel is where we store all the information for all of our game objects. So for example the directional light has this here called light and this is known as a component. A component depending on what it's used for, contains all the relative information. For example, this light component contains all the information we need to modify this light. For example, if we would change the intensity, we wouldn't see much going on in our scene right now because there isn't a lot here. There is just a light and a camera. But you could play around with that if you wanted to. If you make a mistake, you can always hold control, press Z to undo, just like in Windows. On that topic up here, this is a transform component, and this is basically the position, rotation, and size of any object in Unity. So position is based on X, Y, and Z 
coordinates, giving it a 3D environment. A game with a rotation, it depends on how it's rotated. And same with scale, the size. So these three objects, X, Y, and Z, on position, rotation, and scale, are very important in Unity. On that topic, we can also change the size and rotation and scale of anything just by typing a number. But for objects like a directional light, it's not going to make too much of a difference. But we'll get into that later on in this tutorial. Down the bottom here, we have the project window. And this is where we store all of our assets. Now an asset is defined as a, something like a texture, something like a script, something like a model. It could be almost anything which is involved in Unity. And this is where they are all stored before we bring them in to our game itself. And we also have them in folders just to keep things a little neat. Next to it, we have the console. The console is a handy little tool, especially when you get round to programming. This is where, for example, it displays all our errors. If we have any, if we've done some code wrong, it will tell us down here exactly where we've gone wrong with our code. And we can see what exactly is going on. We can click it and it will take us to where it thinks there's an error in the code. The console won't be too important in the first couple of tutorials of this. However, once we get deep into coding, it will be. Now, there are two tabs so far that I haven't actually touched upon. That is the asset store and the animation tab. These aren't too relevant at the moment. However, if you would like them in your scene, just like I have, all you would need to do is click the little menu button here and click on Add Tab and click Animation. And it will bring this Animation tab. And as you will guess with this one, this is just a way of creating animations on certain objects within the scene. And the Asset Store, you can get to that a different way, I guess. You can go to Window and you can also go here to Asset Store. I'll explain the asset store as we go a little further into this series. So we've got the basic layout of Unity. We've got how things work. One last thing to take a look at is the ability to customize how it looks. We could take the console and move it here. Just become its own window if you want to. If you think that's not good enough, you could always connect this to this large view up here with the scene just by moving the tab up here and shifting along. So you can easily customize how Unity looks, just completely. It's entirely up to you how you want it to look. You can bring your hierarchy over here to the inspector panel if you wanted to, or bring the inspector panel over here to the hierarchy. Again, it's down to preference. It's all down to you. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is build settings. It's important to get the build settings correct before we go any further into development. So if we go to File and click on Build Settings, you'll be presented with this window here. Now, the reason I say it's important to get it done now is because the bigger your project becomes, the longer it will take to switch platform. And as I said earlier, we're going to build specifically for PC throughout the series, but there is nothing stopping you building for supported platforms, i.e. iOS or Android. And if you wanted to build for these, you would click on Switch Platform and it will build it ready for that platform. Ultimately, Unity, will it doesn't really care the engine, how you build it, what you build it for, or anything like that. It's only when we create the game at the end, that's where this really matters. If you built it for Mac, PC, whatever, but then decided, oh, actually, I'll port this to Android. You could do that. Even if you had a complete project, a massive project, you could still switch platform. It would just take a little time to switch that platform over to Android. So it's just something to keep in mind. As I say, it's always best to kind of work with one and then when you've done it, port to another. And this little Unity icon dictates which platform is currently selected. Up here at the top, you'll also notice scenes in build. This is where we would store all of our scenes. A scene is defined as this whole section here. So everything we build in this place right now is called a scene. But we only deal with one scene just for now. So literally Unity is very object oriented and you can see that just by looking at it, how it is, how it looks, all the assets you can have. And a lot of game engines these days are very object oriented. So, but that isn't to say there is not just as much coding because there absolutely is. Coding is a vital part of Unity and naturally we will be getting into that. If you're not a coder by nature, don't worry, 
I will guide you through every step of the way, encoding, explaining everything as we go along, until you feel knowledgeable enough with the code. So, let's start building something, let's have something going on. A couple of things to note first is, if we click in our scene view with the left mouse button, here, if we click here, there's nothing here, so nothing is selected. So let's use our arrow keys, and we can shift our focus all around the scene. You can see here, I'm just pressing the arrow keys and we can move around. If you hold down your right mouse button, you get the little eye icon and you can pivot around where you are. So you can look up and down, left, right, and all around, and you can turn the scene completely around if you want to, like so. If you hold the middle mouse wheel, you get the little hand tool and you can move the pivot position so you can get a better view or a better angle on your game. So you can combine this, bring it all the way up here, hold the right mouse button and look down and you can see where we've just come from. So if you scroll the middle mouse wheel, you can also zoom in and zoom out. So combining these three together can be quite handy to quickly navigate around your scene. So, what else is there to do? Well, as I said, it's very object oriented. So let's go to game object at the top and let's click 3D object and let's click cube. Now, for those of you who are wondering what this game is going to look like, the thumbnail for this series is actually an alpha build that I created whilst developing this series. So that's what I do for most series. I create a game of my own based on what I would like it to be. And then I base an entire series on what I've created, how I've got to that point and beyond. So what you see is what we're going to get in this series. So we have this object in. And we can see by default it's put the position as some crazy numbers. 1.294433.55. You know. Let's change this to 0, 0, 0. And you see, as we've done that, it's moved the object down here. So let's get this into focus without messing around too much with the mouse or keys. Let's go over to our hierarchy and double click on the cube. And it'll bring it straight into focus. Also, if we press F, it will do the same. So if we go to, let's say, the camera here and press F, it will bring it into focus. Cube, press F, it will highlight it to say this is what you are and it is in view. Again, double click, bring it into focus. So what can we do with this object? So the primary thing about a game is to have a floor. We need a floor. Let's create a floor. So let's manipulate this cube to be more like a floor. We can use the scale right here to stretch this cube in many ways. So let's stretch it on the X to let's say 10. And let's also stretch on the Z to also 10. And now let's zoom out, hold the middle mouse wheel, drag up, and then hold the right mouse button and look down. And now we can see this cube has been changed into this gigantic object. So this is going to serve as a floor. Now we could also rotate if we wanted to. So you can see I'm rotating here. And all I've done to get this rotation to occur is hold my mouse button over X, hold left down, and move it. And you can see the rotation. Same applies to anything here. So I've held my left mouse button down. And you can see just how this is rotating. Same again with Z. And this also applies to everything within transform. So we could change the Y. Messing around, a little bit silly. Again, you can see just how this is reacting. So we've made a mistake. We've done this too much. We've got some silly numbers. Let's hold control, press Z to undo back to where we were, which is right there. So position 0, 0, 0, rotation 0, 0, 0, scale. 10, 1, 10. So the 1 represents the Y, which is the green. The X represents the red, and the Z represents the blue. So what else can we do? What else can we do here? Well, Wolfenstein has walls, does it? So let's add in a wall. Now, we can either do this the easy way, which is basically duplicate this, or we can go about it the same way we've done to add this in. If we went to game object, Go to 3D object, go to cube, 
Again, we'd be presented with a cube, but it's off center again. So once again, we'd have to zero, 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 move into position, do what else. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to press delete on that cube now. But I'm going to take this original cube that we've had as the floor. I'm going to hold control and press D. And what that does is it duplicates the object that we have selected. So you can see here that this cube has now created a clone here. Now, the last thing we're going to take a look at is something called snap settings. And this will become absolutely vital because of the game we're designing here. If we go to edit and go down to snap settings, I currently have mine set to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. These bottom two aren't quite relevant at the moment. However, what these mean is that if we moved this particular object now, you would see its position on the Z change in decimal numbers. So you can see we've just moved it to 1.92. Move it back, we've got 1.6. Move back a little bit more, 1.48. This makes it difficult to align objects together. So I'm going to set that back to zero. This is where the snap settings come in. So let's say we want to move this by one whole position at a time. We can set this to one, one, one. And if we go onto our object now, hold down the control key on the keyboard and try and move it again, you will see it snaps in intervals of one every time. Now this is fantastic for helping us align our level together. Again, because the game we're designing here, snap settings are vital. I like to keep them as 0 0.5 and basically what this means is that it will move this in increments of 0.5. So you can see it moves 0.5 in any direction that we go. So let's undo all that and now let's change this into a bit more of a wall. So I'm going to change the scale to 5 by 5 by 5 and yes it may not look fantastic but this will serve as a wall especially in the next tutorial. It's intersecting and looks like it's glitching with the floor. So let's pull it out of the floor. Hold control and pull the object up. At this point, our snap settings have made these two objects sit flush against each other with no messing around. They are absolutely perfect. It just helps us a lot in the future. So let's move this to the edge to make it more wall like. So hold control and let's drag it this way to about there. And let's drag it this way to about there. So this can be used as a wall. So let's actually right click and rename these objects now. So in the hierarchy, you can right click and rename. And let's call this floor 001. And let's call this cube, the duplicate one, which we've changed the shape of. And let's rename this to wall 001. So the last thing we're going to do, and I'm sure I said the last thing we're going to do was that, but this is the last thing we're going to do now. We're going to save this scene. So by default, we are in sample scene.unity. And if we go into this folder here where it says scenes, you will see this is it right here. The Unity logo right here represents an asset, and that is the scene. So even the scene is an asset in Unity. But we don't want it to be called sample scene. So we're going to file and save scene as, and we'll call this, let's just call it level 001 and hit save. And it saved it here in the assets window. So finally, let's drag and drop this scene, even though we're in it, into this scenes folder. And there we go. We've now moved that asset into there. So that's how you can shift assets around. So we've got our scene saved. We've got everything ready. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at textures. So we'll bring in some textures for our floor and for this wall. We'll look at uh, materials and we'll also talk about why we use seamless textures. They are vital, again, in this style of game. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.